Hello, welcome to Christina's Knitting Catch-Up episode 20. Today is Tuesday the 15th of December. I'm recording on a Tuesday because I've had a very busy weekend and I was even busy yesterday as well so I couldn't record. I'm Christina and you can find me on Instagram as cutifulchristina. My blog is cutifulchristina.com but I don't post there much. And we have a Ravelry group called Christina's Knitting Catch-Up where I post show notes and other type things. So do come and join in there. So today I've got a few things to show you. I've been knitting quite a bit um, despite having a lot of other things to do. And I've also got some acquisitions to show you. So that's all very exciting. So I have a finished object but I can't show you it live because it is wrapped. I finished my brother's socks and that means I've finished four pairs of gift socks. Uh, my husband, my mum, my dad and my brother. And I'll put up a photo here of all of the finished socks. I put this photo on Instagram so uh, have a look at all of those lovely socks that I have finished. They're washed. I washed them in the washing machine so I know that they're fine to do that. Woven in all the ends, very happy with that indeed. And they're all wrapped under my little Christmas tree, which you can't see. It's over there. <laughs> you can't see it. But I've got a little star, see? Isn't that pretty? And some candles. It's Christmas. Um, so that's finished. That's exciting. And then I thought, I really, I've got a few weeks till Christmas. I really should knit some socks for my parents-in-law, since I have their, you know, foot outline and everything. So... I have started it but what I did first was I dyed the yarn. This yarn that I am using for my father-in-law's socks is uh, Knit Picks Stroll in the sport weight so a bit thicker than normal sock weight yarn and uh, I'll put up a photo of uh, it drying but what I did was I made this into a very long six meter no must have been 12 meter skein and I divided it into a few sections thinking okay four meters for the big stripe um I've got to make sure this adds up three meters each for the small stripe smaller stripes and two meters for the smallest stripe so it should go uh, big gray stripe smaller red stripe smallest blue stripe, larger red stripe. So the two red stripes should be the same. Anyway, uh, so I made this big skein, tied it off into little sections, dip dyed them uh, one at a time, and then I rolled it up and nuked it in the microwave. And this is sock number one. Look at that. I'm extremely happy with how this has come out. There's the toe. So my father-in-law's feet are a bit wider than, well, everyone else's so far. And uh, so I cast on, I think I've got 64 stitches up here. So 32 on each side of the magic loop needle. And I'm just quite happy with how this dyeing came out. It's not perfect. The, gray, the dark gray is actually... Uh, red, yellow and blue mixed together in uh, special amounts. I had to experiment a bit with that before it would actually turn grey. Uh, I didn't want it to be brown. But as it turns out, red, yellow and blue in certain amounts makes black in food dye. Um, so anyway, that's what I did. I did that last Tuesday, I think, or Monday. So after I recorded last, and I did a fish lips kiss heel with a uh, this other, the same yarn that I dyed with some other black food colouring that didn't turn out so well. This is the one that comes off on my hands when I knit it. More on that later. Uh, so the heel might be a bit weird, but this doesn't seem to bleed at all. I haven't yet washed these in a machine, so I'll have to wait and see if it actually does bleed or fade in the machine because I don't know what's going to happen. So I weighed the ball and knit half on this sock 
and I've started on the other sock. And uh, when I've knit the rest of the ball, I will do a cuff in this contrast grey, which uh, may turn white in the wash. We'll find out. I'm not that worried. I think these feel lovely. I think they'll wear beautifully. I think you'll like them a lot. So anyway, that was that's my dyeing that I did this past week and the knitting. Another thing that I have been working on is my mother-in-law's socks. And they fell down on the floor. Excuse me. And they're just another Arnie and Carlos design line sock. Uh, but I didn't use a contrast toe, so it's just going to be the one yarn. I've run out of contrast yarns, so that's exciting. She's got a fairly small foot, about the same size as mine, but she has a larger arch, so uh, I'll have to increase towards the heel. So, yeah, I hope that fits her. It looks kind of pointy, but her, sh her shoe shape, foot shape, was kind of pointy, so. So we'll find out. Anyway, that's coming along well. It's very pretty, and that's all I've done. I've got two balls of this yarn, and um, yeah. So last week I told you I was going to try and knit differently. I haven't been able to. It's just too hard to retrain myself, and I hope eventually that I, I do get to retrain myself and do it, knit in a faster way. But for now, for now, this is this is just how I knit. And I think it's fast enough, really. Um, yeah. So there's one other thing I cast on this week. Three things I've cast on. Had a bit of a binge. Uh, and it is the Playful Stripes cardigan that I've been meaning to knit for ages for my friend. She's about to pop. So there it is. It's not quite finished. I still have to do the other button band. As you can see, there's no button band there. Done the buttonhole band. Now this is in the the second size, which is apparently six months. And the baby is due on the 4th of January, which is my dad's birthday. Uh, so six months from then should fit, uh, and it also should be cold. So, yeah. So the yarns I used, this is this, this Knit Pick Stroll in sport weight that I dyed with a funny brand of black food dye and it came out, like it came off on my, it comes off on my hands when I, when I knit with it. So I think it is going to bleed when I, when I soak it. I'm going to be really harsh on it and I'm going to really soak it and wash it hard to make sure as much of the colour comes out of this as possible before I give it away because I don't want to give something to a baby and then it comes off on their skin and or on their other clothes. So just two more things to do. I have to do the other button band and I have to graft this underarm. I've done the other one. I changed the pattern slightly in that I didn't I used the contrast yarn for the button band which I think looks super cool, right, doesn't it? Doesn't that look amazing? And I'll do the same for the other one. Here's the yarn in case you were wondering. I caked it up and it looks beautiful. Uh, also, the pattern calls for several different solid colours for the yoke and sleeve contrasts, but I, of course, just used my self-striping yarn that I dyed. So I've been using a lot of Knit Pick Stroll in the blank colour and hand dyeing it. I just think this is so cool. I'm so happy with it. What a cool thing. Anyway, I don't really know what size babies are, so I'm hoping that this fits her baby when it's six months old. Because I don't think it would fit her tummy. Her tummy is bigger than this. But... I suppose she's got her organs in there too. Anyway, haven't blocked it. I think it'll block out a tiny bit bigger because of all the garter stitch. But yeah, super happy with this. This has come out just lovely. And that's all my knitting. One pair of socks for my father-in-law. One so far, 
one little part of a sock for my mother-in-law and uh, that little cardigan for my friend who will be popping out a baby pretty quick. It's her first baby and I think she is super excited about it. So this coming week I'm going to finish these socks and the other socks and that cardigan obviously and uh, if I finish all of that I will be well pleased because then that'll be my Christmas knitting I think. Huh, goodness me, six pairs of socks for Christmas knitting is has been a huge undertaking. I didn't even mean to start with six socks, I, I was going to only knit four and even that was a huge undertaking. So I'm actually really looking forward to Christmas Day when everybody unwraps their socks and I want to get a photo of everybody wearing their socks together. I think that's going to be super cute. Obviously, well not obvious, it's not obvious, but um, my family, my parents and brother will be having Christmas separate to my husband's parents and this year, even though we live in the same town, it's just it's just how things work. There's uh, my husband's family is they're all in Canberra, so it's it's kind of large. So he's got his parents, his brother, his grandmother, and his uncle. And my parents just have uh, them and my brother. So uh, a few more people over on the other side, and I just think it's too hard to join forces right now. Maybe when Charles and I are really growing up and we have a family, then maybe we'll have Christmases all together at our place. That, I think that would be really nice. But anyway, this year we're at his parents' house for the Christmas lunch. So probably we'll go to my parents' house in the morning, maybe go to church uh, with them and uh, open presents and then we'll go over for lunch and then maybe we'll come back it's usually pretty busy. Uh, do a lot of toing and froing, and I don't think anybody cares about that. I think that they're quite happy to have us run around town all day. Um, but it, it does get quite tiring. Yeah. So anyway, I've had a, a couple of acquisitions this week. Uh, there's been well, there's been a huge amount of acquisitions this week, but not all uh, knitting-related acquisitions. Um, for a start. I've been ordering presents and things, so there's been a few things arriving at the door, which has been lovely. But I did get two yarny things this week as well. So the first thing I got, just finish this row. <laughs> okay. First thing I got was some blank sock yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills. Not sure if I told you I ordered this, but they were having a um, a special. They don't usually have this, but I hope they stock it from now on. It was only $9 or something per skein, and this is just, you know, 75% merino, 25% nylon, warm machine wash, short gentle cycle, blah, 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 normal spin, do not tumble dry, etc. So normal sock yarn, essentially. And I bought five skeins of this to dye, and... Um, my friend Violet is going to get some for Christmas, so I'm going to dye some for her in a nice colourful stripe pattern and see how she likes it. And so I've got five skeins of this. I'm thinking of getting more because I, I so enjoy dyeing yarn. Second thing I got was an order from Love Knitting. They come in these little baggies. And I got in their special... They, they had like a Black Friday kind of sale thing. Um, I got five skeins of Barocco Ultra Alpaca in the Chianti colorway. I think it's called Chianti. It says color is 6236. 6236. So it doesn't have the, the name of the colorway here, but on the website, I think it was Chianti. And it's this lovely um, deep red. So I'm going to make myself a cardigan out of this. After all of my unselfish Christmas knitting, I'm going to make myself a cardigan. So my favorite cardigan that I've ever made is my uh, Ginny's cardigan cardigan. Um, 
I forget who it's by, but it's also out of Ultra Alpaca. And I adore that cardigan. I wore it non-stop this winter. Every photo I see, or like our, our TV scrolls through photos sometimes, every photo I'm in, I'm wearing that cardigan. And my husband says, do you even have any other cardigans? I do, I have lots. But it was just the best. The right length, oh, so great. So I bought some more of the yarn. I bought one extra skein. And I'm going to make the same cardigan except maybe in one size bigger and I'll include the pockets this time because last time I left them off and I thought maybe I would do a different kind of lace pattern down the back maybe I'll design one myself and and do that so that is the plan for my ultra alpaca yarn here and uh, that's pretty much all of my acquisitions this week some yarn uh, I'm still really excited about it though so that's great. I'm back. Yeah. That's so I'd forgotten that there was a couple of other things I did order. So the first thing is I bought a 12 pack of black food coloring to dye with. Um, because I wasn't, I mean, it's okay, but I wasn't that happy with the gray here. I wanted it more even colored. And so I bought it online because I've looked everywhere in Canberra for this and I could not find it anywhere. I looked on the Queen website and they had it for sale so I could just buy it online. Um, so that's awesome. I'm so happy with that. I uh, haven't used it yet. Got two six packs. So that should last me for a while. I became worried that they were uh, phasing them out, but I don't think they are. They're phasing out a different line of their natural food colors. So I got a couple of them. Not sure if they work or not. So we'll have to find out. The other thing is I saw Andrea from the Wonderwall podcast the other day, and she gave me a little Christmas present, which I did not expect. And I did not have anything for her. Well, I'll tell you why in a sec. It really was not the right uh, place for me to have anything on me. I'm just trying to extract these these things. She gave me a set of her lovely Wonderwall stitch markers for Christmas. Oh my gosh, I'm dropping all my stitch markers here. I keep them in a little bag. This this bag, I actually I bought a thousand of these bags, not literally, for my wedding little prezies. Okay, so I've taken them off there of their little backing thing but here they are so this one is a ladybird this one's a little jewel this one says made with love can you see that that's three and then there's a little snail a little a little apple and Lastly, a little Tinkerbell fairy, and she is a little claw one, so she can be a progress keeper. I've never had a progress keeper before, and I've always thought, I really like a progress keeper. So I'm really happy to have them, and they just are living with all my other stitch markers in this little bag. I have more of these bags. I love them. Uh, so that was one other yarny thing that I bought and here's another thing that we got um, We bought we sort of ordered a photo album thing to send to My husband's other grandmother who lives in Brisbane. I don't have any grandparents anymore but he's got two grandmothers and one lives in Brisbane the other is here and when we went to Brisbane recently She didn't have any photos from our wedding so we we got her a little a little book of our wedding photos. There we are. Look at us all happy there. So I wonder if there's any nice photo I can show you. And I there are also some photos in there from when we were in Brisbane too. But that's that's a particularly nice photo. He posed us all serious. It's like the one at the front. Yeah, 
So that was nice. And we did this using um, the Apple Photos app. Just on my laptop, if you go to Photos in on your laptop or I guess on your iPad or iPhone, you can create a book and you actually pay for it and they send it to you. So that's what we did. And I think she'll really like that. I have to package it up and send it off. Um, yeah. So there's a few other things that I, I bought this week. And, of course, there's been other presents arriving and stuff. So let me tell you a bit about my week this past week. It's been extremely busy. I think I told you it was going to be busy, but I think it turned out busier than I thought. <laughs> so Monday, um, I had to go and grab some timpani from the school where I work. Two timpani. They fit in my car and take them to a rehearsal at a church here at St. Paul's get them up into the loft and have a rehearsal. Then Tuesday we had a concert at St Paul's, which was just carols. I've done it for a few years. And uh, then I had to move them to St Christopher's, which is another church in, in town. And it's much more difficult to get the drums up there because it's a spiral staircase. Very difficult. So I'll pop in a picture of what we did there. Played the carols, which was lovely. Then Friday, yeah, that was Thursday. Then Friday I had to get the drums back to Boys Grammar and uh, that was a bit of an effort, i got to say. And then, because there's construction and you can't get your car close and, and everything. So that was, that was a bit of fun. Then on Friday uh, we had to take our marimba to another venue, another theatre for a concert on Saturday. Uh, also on Friday I had to take our vibraphone to my church where I was going to be playing on Sunday, had a rehearsal there on Friday. Then Saturday um, we had, we moved the xylophone over to the theatre as well and we had a gigantic concert at this theatre. And the concert was for the Groove Warehouse and all of the stuff that's been happening there all year. I, I wasn't involved in nearly all of it. So the the warehouse has lessons and classes and ensembles for all sorts of different people, lots of different ensembles, lots of but it's all percussion. So there were little tiny kitties playing uh, a big gathering drum and they were all sitting around. How about I put this down so you can see me knit? Not that it's that interesting. Uh, and, you know, there were adult drum kit classes where there were old people learning to play drums and we had our steel pan ensemble. There was a gamelan ensemble. And I personally played a ragtime xylophone sort of solo with a backing group and it went really well. I was very nervous. I think I would have been less nervous if it had been 10 pieces of ragtime xylophone, but it was just the one and it was a hard one. So I had to really practice a lot and get better. Uh, but it was fun, fun to play with everybody and it was exhausting. And I've never seen so much percussion on stage at one time. It was crazy. Nor so many percussionists on stage at once. So they've done really well in, in that uh, business. And then that night, uh, after the concert finished at about 9, 8.30, something like that, started at 6, um, we had to pack everything down and then we went out for a big meal at the Chinese restaurant over the road called the Golden Drum, conveniently. Uh, and then on Sunday, my husband and I played vibraphone at my church carols service and then packed that up, took that home, and then he went off to the theatre to get our marimba while I stayed home and set up all of our other instruments. So, and then he came home with our marimba and then we set that up. So 
it's been a huge week of moving gear and setting things up and packing things up and I don't know if I can convey to you how tiring that is. <laughs> like it is super tiring to be setting up and packing up these instruments all day. They're heavy. They're heavy and you have to be careful with them. So you can't just do a slapdash job. So I've been doing that all week last week. And then on Sunday, after I'd done all that, we'd set everything up. We went and had a barbecue with some friends from the concert and you know I I love knitting and everything but I just love hanging out with other percussionists they're great um, they just you can talk about the same stuff it's it's such a huge world and uh, I love talking to knitters as well because that's a huge world too and uh, it's something that you can't talk to normals about you know, normals, muggles, you could call them. You can't talk to them about knitting. They're like, oh, um, I don't even know anything of what you're talking about. Like I went to this um, rehearsal at the church where I was doing timpani and I was knitting these socks. I was doing this and a guy said, oh, what are you knitting? Oh, a pair of socks, cool. I dyed the yarn, I said, and he just looked at me blankly. He's like, I, I don't even... I don't even know what you're talking about now you know so they just don't get it and that's fine I mean I don't know how to play trumpet he did and I'm sure he could talk about trumpet for ages but it's just interesting how some people are completely unaware of just an entire aspect of something that's integral to my personality and yeah, you have to learn to talk to the muggles as well. You have to say, oh, yes, I, I dyed it in a big loop and I uh, made one section this colour and the next section that colour and then when you knit it, it turns into stripes. And even that sort of, they don't understand that either, really. Um, and, like, people don't know what stitch markers are. Stuff like that. Um, it's kind of nice. Nice to have a, like a secret language with other knitters and for me with other percussionists as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure we've all got things that we're particularly nerdy about that um, you enjoy talking about with other people who share that interest. Uh, I guess I'm just lucky that I've got two of those interests. Yeah, so then after that barbecue on Sunday, we went to Ikea. We have an Ikea here in Canberra now. It's been open for about a month, I'd say. And uh, I had never been yet. I've been to Ikea in other places, as you can see from my Ikea chair and Ikea lamp. That's the pillow and that's the Tisdag. Um, but we went because, you know, we've been moving gear all week. I sit up straight moving gear all week and we just discovered our house is too small. We have uh, too many things in our tiny house. And so what we did was we went and we got my husband a smaller desk uh, so that it's this room up here. It's got a marimba in it and a desk and another desk and a sewing machine and a filing cabinet. It's just completely packed. So we made his desk a lot smaller and uh, got rid of the other one. So we got a little bit more space in there. I'm also getting rid of my dress form so that we have a bit more space. I don't really use her. So anyway, I went to Ikea. I also got this lamp, this uh, star lamp, which is super pretty. It looks so nice at night when you turn off all the lights in the house and you've got a star, it's so festive. And uh, my husband lived in Sweden for a couple of years and he had one like that. And now we have another one and it sort of feels nice. It's like a, a memory that we share that he used to have. Um, yeah, and then yesterday I was also too busy to do anything because I had to have a person around for lunch and then I went to my physio, um, you know, about my tummy muscle problems and pain problems. And he basically said he doesn't want to see me again. He thinks I'm better. I'm not totally better. Like, I'm a little bit sore today. 
But I think the fact that we moved gear all weekend, like intensively moved stuff and lifted stuff, I think the fact that I haven't had a massive flare up is really positive, right? I've got a little bit of pain, but uh, I'm not debilitated. I'm quite cheerful, as you can see. And uh, yeah, so I'm really pleased about that. I really like my physiotherapist, so I'm a bit sad that I won't see him again. Um, we had some lovely chats and I found him also a bit of a counsellor because I was so upset about my pain. It wasn't just pain, it was really, it was me being upset about the pain. And he used to counsel me a lot about it and help me get through it in a better way help me think about the pain in, in a different way. And it, it'll be sad not to see him again, but at the same time, it's lovely that he thinks that I'm ready to not have physiotherapy anymore. So, yeah. So that's another good thing. Um, also, a nice thing was that uh, there was a review of the concert I was in, a review in, like, a local magazine newspaper thing, and it mentioned me specifically in, in the paper and said that I was virtuosic. And that was extremely nice to read. Like, I don't think I played particularly better than any other concert I've done at this concert. But the difference was that there were actually people at this concert and someone reviewed it. Whereas the concerts I usually do, they're for, like, local old people's homes or, or something like that where there's no reviewer and those people don't really have any power to give me any more gigs. So it was nice. This particular concert, there were 150 people or 160 or something. The theatre was packed and, you know, it was a huge concert. So it was really, uh, I was chuffed, just chuffed to, to see that. And like all the hard work and all the nerves really paid off in the end. Someone really liked it. So, so that was lovely. So this coming week, uh, today I'm going to lunch at my parents' house. Uh, my old music teacher is going to be there. Uh, my old piano teacher, she's a family friend. And I'll have lunch with them. And then uh, we're having someone around for dinner who's a vegetarian. I don't know what to make. Um, and yeah, pretty much that's what's going on. Nothing much this coming week. Christmas things, having lunch with someone tomorrow, going out for dinner. Maybe we'll see Star Wars on Thursday. That'll be good. Can't have any spoilers. So yeah, that's about it from me this week. Um, I hope you enjoy your knitting and your Christmas. Get going on some fun Christmas things, make some rumbles, get into it, eat some chocolate, make some gingerbread houses. So yeah, you have a really lovely week. I think that's all I had to say. And I'll see you again next week or probably at the end of this week. So see you later. Have a nice week. Bye.